Hi, I'm Matt from Delphi, and today we're going to look at this Tesla Model S. What we're going to do today is remove and replace the pyrotechnic fuse because we've got a warning on the dashboard. Let's take a look. So as we can see on the dashboard, we have battery fuse replacement required. This is caused by um, a battery inside the pyrotechnic fuse that has a lifespan of approximately eight years. You initially get this warning and then eventually the battery will fail and the fuse will disconnect the high voltage battery from the vehicle. In order to gain access to the fuse, it depends on the year of the vehicle. On this particular model, unfortunately, it's on the top of the battery. So it involves removing the whole high voltage battery. If it was slightly newer, there would be an access hatch from underneath. But in order to do either methods, we need to make the vehicle safe first. So let's do that. To make the vehicle safe, it's a three step process. The first is to disconnect the 12 volt battery, which is under the front, and then locate the first responder loop and disconnect that. Then we're going to move and check for the HV at the test points on the vehicle. Disconnecting the 12 volt battery on the negative terminal, like so. So this is the first responder cut loop. See on the label here, this is where the first responders would cut this wire, disabling the vehicle. We're going to do it by disconnecting so we can actually reuse, like so. We're going to check for the absence of high voltage. We can do that in one of two methods. If the vehicle has a large drive motor, that can be done underneath at the connections to the inverter that's built within it. If it's a small drive, you can't do it there. You have to do it under the rear seat at the junction box. We're going to do that here so it crosses all models. Let's remove the seat. That's the seat base removed. Next thing to do is remove the sound deadening and we're now presented with the seat base frame um, which needs to be removed using the bolt securing it around the perimeter including the seat belt uh, location points. After we've done that we're going to access this HV test point here underneath the junction box. Obviously before we get close to that we'll be wearing the correct PPE. So we have the cage up and we're starting to remove all of the covers to access the HV test points. Wearing the correct PPE using the correct 1000 volt insulated tools. We've removed all the bolts from the cover of the junction box. Let's remove the lid. And now we can see all the HV connection points. These two here are our test points. So we're going to get our correctly rated meter that's been proven on a source so we know it's functional and we're going to test across these two points here for the absence of voltage which we have we'll now reconfirm the meter on another source and we're good to work so we have the vehicle in the air the first task is to remove the rear shear plates so we're going to do that then we're going to remove the rails along the side and then we're going to remove the centre fixings and the ones around the perimeter once we've supported the battery. So we're removing the rear shear plates, like so. That's both rear shear plates removed onto the front bash plate. Next step, the four centre bolts.
So that's the battery table located underneath the vehicle. We're now going to raise it up and support the weight of the battery. And now we need to remove the front bolt for the uh, battery pack, 13 mil, and we're going to move across. and the two remaining 21 mil bolts on each corner. And now we're removing the bolts along each rail, like so. While we're underneath the vehicle, it's important to note that we need to make sure we have clearance for the battery pack to drop down past the jacking point. We've also got the table positioned centrally and leveled underneath the battery pack. We now have access to the perimeter bolts and we can work our way around the edge. So now we're going to lower the battery from the vehicle. As it drops from the chassis of the vehicle, there are two gate valves for the coolant they will close, there will be a small spillage, but it should stop fairly quickly. So now we're going to replace the fuse and the fuse cover. When replacing the fuse cover, you could choose the original Tesla version, which is slightly dished if you were to fit it the wrong way around. So be careful of that. As you'll see later, they do corrode. Better option would be an aftermarket anodized aluminum plate that will not corrode and will last the lifetime of the vehicle. Let's get the cover off. As you can see, quite heavily corroded, but not gone through, thankfully. We're going to start by removing the Torx bits and then breaking the seal. We've removed all the bolts on the cover, wearing PPE because we are at a potential risk point. We've cleared the silicon around the outside and we're ready to lift the cover, like so. We can now see the fuse and we can see the fixing points here, two 13 mils, which we're going to use a fully insulated tool to remove. and withdraw the fuse. So the fuse on the left is the original and the replacement is on the right. And if we look at the label, we can see it says current powered. So we know it's not got an internal battery as the original did. So we're going to refit the fuse like so. And then we're going to talk to nine newton meters as per the manual. The only bit that remains to do now is to fit the cover and seal it all back up. That's the cover fitted and sealed and the securing bolts torqued to two newton meters. All that remains now is to raise the battery and refit to the vehicle. That's the car on the ground. All that remains to do now is reconnect the first responder loop and then reconnect the 12 volt battery. That's the vehicle powered up. We're now going to get the diagnostic software, which is Tesla Toolbox, and reset the fuse adaption. Okay, we've now loaded Toolbox. If you want to learn more on how to use that, please check out our academy for an online course. We're now going to search for a pyro routine, run that, and write the correct fuse type to the BMS. That's been successful. 
The only thing remaining to do now is run the coolant purge routine as we've had the battery out. And that's it, job complete. For more videos, be sure to follow us on social media or check out the Masters of Motion Hub. For more expert-led courses, please visit the Delphi Academy. Thanks for watching.